Welcome. This is the April 24th OpenZFS production user call. We have Andrew, Stu, Jan, Daniel, and myself, Michael. And big news, you heard it here first or second. The OpenZFS, perhaps we'll call it the Production User Summit or Conference, will be October 26th and 27th in Portland, Oregon. And following the traditional pattern, the OpenZFS Developer Summit will be Monday, Tuesday, October 28th, 29th. We would love to see you there. We are looking for sponsors and the official announcements will come out soon. Also looking at you, Daniel, uh, some of you will be at BSD CAN. It is coming up in May. It's the very tail end of May into June and uh, second to the developer summit. That's the number one place on earth to discuss open ZFS. So I invite you to register if you haven't. It's in Ottawa. It's relatively affordable compared to countless events, and we're always looking for sponsors. Ask me anything. So Daniel, you have some news about a new feature that solves a problem. Yeah, I've been uh, trying to research uh, features in Upstream to talk about in my BSD talk because I'm working on a script that uh, that helps manage uh, ZFS. And uh, one of the problems is that when you replicate uh, when you replicate over the mount, the mount points, the, if they're fixed, if they're not inherited, they uh, they there's a risk that they can they can rewrite your current mount points um, when you replicate them in. So there's an alt root um, that that you can do on a pool import, but that's that's now going to be added to um, you know to to any arbitrary CFS file system so that. The subfile systems, when replicated in, will then have a relative mount point path, um, which is great. That that's a huge problem that that I was I've been trying to work around, and it'll be exciting when that finally gets upstream uh, for all of us, especially with zroot, with FreeBSD zroot. I think we'll love to have that. Absolutely, because I've done that. I did it like three months ago, and it's not easy to untangle. Go ahead, Jan. So far, what you can do is you can override the can mount property uh, or other workarounds, but that would finally be a solution instead of a workaround. So, right. That's what, yeah, that's what my script does is we 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 don't mount and we reset, we inherit mount points. Um, and that, that makes sense for my situation, but, you know, lots of situations, especially if people do patching via ZFS, um, that might not really be a great solution for everyone. Regarding patching via ZFS, has anyone heard of someone using ZFS replication and snapshots in boot environments similar to what macOS does for um, upgrade via uh, ZFS receive, basically? There's um, a good look. There's a tool in uh, there's a tool called JE Control, you know, similar to BE Control that uh, that's supposed to do that sort of thing. I'm waiting for some uh, for some patches before I try deploying it, but that's that's something I'm curious about for my jails. Uh, sounds awesome. I I don't because it was it was through a yeah uh, through a vendor introduced me to it, and then I said, oh well, this is great, but it's you know, because because I don't, you know, I don't really use a jail environment. I, I don't want to have the the you know crazy root mount points that are very useful for having in a Z root. I don't think they're quite as useful to have in a in a jail, but but it could be it could be cool nonetheless. Hmm. Yeah, J like like B E C T L. It's J yeah. J E C T L. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let me fix that. Uh, yeah, and that's you think totally hidden behind a vendor wall? No, 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 not at all. Oh, it's, oh, it's, cool. I think it's, I found the GitHub repository for it and yes, posted sir. it in the chat. Uh, if you could Fire confirm that, who's that? The uh, okay. contributors okay. look um, familiar. Yeah, those are some familiar faces. Let's see. Boom. Apply and clicky clicky. Just one sec. Let's see what happens. We get. I uh, can't find this. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a. Oh yeah, there's some. Oh, that's a copy and paste error. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I can fix that. 
boom, last year, four months ago. I think some other branches are in development because okay. we're, we're talking about some uh, some features that are that are in there. Cool. Nice. I, I was also nice thinking I was also thinking for this that the you know that they don't have to be under the root in a jail. They could be somewhere else entirely. So um, I, I still think that it might there might be value in having the top of a jail just being an inherited regular mount point. But um, you know, we'll see. I think I have I have Daniel? some ability to influence options in this. I would heavily disagree with that uh, goal after my last few weeks of research and think there should be basically a level in between the jail, the use case for the data sets, and then the actual data set so that you have my pool slash jails, then an unmountable for, uh, data set for the jail, then one unmountable data set per use case of data like persistent state, uh, base system, packages, maybe other things. And those then reset the mount uh, point so that the actual data sets containing any files uh, then inherit the right mount point from them because they really raise two levels in the ZFS uh, inheritance tree or parent-child relationship tree. But the important part is that if you don't do that, you can't uh, rip out and replace a stateless data sets because you have a stateful data sets you want to preserve as children underneath them. And then you have to untangle this mess, which is a lot harder to do and more error prone and more steps involved than just uh, messing around with the mount point once and then just running ZFS list dash S mount point pipe uh, X arc ZFS mount. Right. So you're, yeah, with that, with that way, there's a lower chance. I mean, it's the same benefit as a, as a zero, I think, because you have, it's one, one fewer reboot. You're, you're likely to be able to do it without rebooting, which could be um, pretty, so handy, jails, right? I'm not worried about rebooting because I have the host to manage the data sets. So I can't, don't have this ugly uh, bootstrapping problem to solve. I have but you still think there's... The value is that now basically I have the different types of data sets in sibling trees next to Java and ZFS list. And I can just kill the base system, for example, to upgrade and then restart the jail and have it uh, clone read only uh, the relevant parts uh, it needs so that it basically updates every time you wipe the clone. And the clone is never mounted writable, of course, because otherwise you would lose something when you destroy it. Right. But you can do the same with your packages and so on, depending on how many basically points of divergence there are, but it, where you have to create directories. It can either be easy to do by hand or with a shell script, or it may uh, require the may drive you to wish for a union file system of sorts. But I found that the latter doesn't really happen. Uh, with the way the FreeBSD file system hierarchy is laid out. Yeah, and of course, no matter what we do, there's going to have to be some magic in Etsy. Um, magic for what? Uh, merging merging the uh, jails uh, unique configuration into uh, you know into what so, the what the uh, and my most... What's updated in an upgrade in a patch? Yes and no. In my most radical uh, idea, I'm just using a tempfs for slash etc and user local etc, and are basically applying the modifications on start. So I pre-populated with uh, base systems uh, 
one or two megabytes of slash etc or user local etc and then uh, just create the users uh, apply the configuration from the jail conf but that's a solution which is specific to jails uh, in no way applicable to something which feels like a real living unix system on the host it's Really, if you treat your jails as uh, easily replaceable cattle, which right. doesn't really happen for hosts to the same degree, because there's also something special about physical hardware. Correct. So, do we have any other jailish topics, or do we have well, Delta news for our friends over in data storage land? In the, Go ahead, Andrew. In the equivalent on the Solaris side, this problem of you know blowing away our um, root volume by mismounting because of where what the mount point is set to. We deal with with a with an option uh, zoned zones are roughly the equivalent of jails yep. that prevents the um, the global zone from mounting at over. Oh, good point. I don't uh -huh. know. I, I don't know if that's helpful at all but if i mean if it is and it then i mean if that still solves your if that same technique would solve the problem you have then that brings our two branches close closer together uh if I remember correctly, the ZFS jail command is not just a wrapper around setting some property, but is distinct from setting other properties, so setting the jail on off. So you couldn't just do it with set the jail property to on or something. And the other problem is that you would be unable to mount it then uh, in the equivalent to the global zone. Um, well, no, you can... You can... You can still mount it, but it mounts in the the from the global zone's perspective. It's still mounted in the normal path. Wait, what? That's the problem that it mounts on top of the already mounted path. Well, no, you you you've got the 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 normal Z uh, Z pool hierarchy. It's still mounted. It, it mounts it there rather than. Oh, so it ignores the mount point property. Yes, as far as I can tell, that's what it does. That would work. Uh, but I think that uh, being able to set an alternative prefix and uh, preventing the mount points from including dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash style of text uh, would be more flexible. Okay. I'm just pointing out the, you know, it's a good idea. How it's done on the other side. By default, if, uh, in, on FreeBSD, when a ZFS data set is mount, tagged as jailed, it just doesn't get mounted uh, into the host by default. And when it gets mounted, then it gets mounted relative to the jail's root dire uh, directory inside the jail. I'm running into so some there you kind of have the bugs with that. Um, and actually, now that Daniel? I'm... Sorry. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, dive in, whoever. Let's well, the, the one thing I was going to say is yeah. now that I'm thinking about it, um, within the zone, you actually can still see the full path. Uh, you you can't see anything outside of of it, you know anything that it shouldn't have access to, but you do still see the full path, not just. It doesn't show up as just slash. Um, so, Daniel, just an observation or maybe a crazy idea. Could you use uh, the jailed mechanism in ZFS on FreeBSD 
to create a jail to then receive the data set in the jail context where the mount would happen. And then basically use the, the not yet implemented alt root instead, uh, instead of that, use the jails root directory. Yes, but I've had three experiences on three different hosts that I cannot replicate where the jail gets into a into sort of a crashy state where the jail is no longer able to unmount its CFS mount points. Oh, yeah. And I have to reboot the host in order to do it. Now, Dan, Ouch. Uh, the other, yeah, the other Dan, uh, you know, was, was skeptical and helpful. And, you know, we, we uh, emailed back and forth once or twice about it. And he had some, he had some suggestions, but I couldn't, I then couldn't reproduce it. Now I have seen this on three machines uh and and i think i think they were between 13 and 14 and so was some 13 some 14 but i can't reproduce it like my and it's it's always by the way my pudrer jail which has a million uh zfs jailed mount points so i don't want to be unhelpful if, because it might be something i'm personally doing that's that's unique but i i often get into a situation where i can't i mean not often I have three times in the last several years gotten into a situation to the point where I don't experiment that much with CFS jail because of that. Um, but I would be willing to give it another shot, especially if I can figure out precisely what I'm doing wrong and how to not do it again. Mm -hmm. I don't want to scare other people from it. Scare, because I haven't been able to find much about this, this issue. Anything else on that topic? In the spirit of storing big data as opposed to just cool jails that are smaller than ever that, as possible and such. Uh, Daniel, any Zelta news? That sounds like you've been hacking on that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm making it a little bit smarter about properties. Um, so now it, uh, it, you know, it only it only sets the top mount point to read only as needed, rather than setting all sub mount points sub elements to read only, which is extremely annoying to undo. Um, I have a rotate option that uh, that will will seek out. So if a if a source data set um, is uh, is rolled back, um, it'll automatically rotate the uh the um the, the the target so your backup it'll rotate the target and make sure that you don't lose any data nice. in all of them which could be annoying to some people but i insist that there shouldn't be a situation where you ever want to delete your backups so um with that principle in mind i, I want to have a option to keep both and that's especially useful in high compliance environments so those will be coming soon to the GitHub, but um, the other news is that there is a FreeBSD port that should oh, be right. available yes. in. Hello. Yes. Yeah, that should be should be available pretty pretty soon, um, awesome. and a Ubuntu and a Ubuntu port in the works. So oh, no way. Okay. Um, the, nope. Yeah, those will those will lag behind a, a little bit, but uh, yeah, for BSD can I want to get the, the rotating option, and also just make sure that the ZFS send and receive flags. Um, if you use those for a Zelta backup or a Zelta sync, that the ZFS flat, uh, the regular ZFS send flags are passed recursively to all the um, to all the data sets being replicated, and that all the you know all of the dash dash uh, options and single letter options are all the same. It's a little tricky because dash s has different functions for send and receive and stuff like that. So I will have to you know, have some creativity there, but I'm trying to make it so that it's absolutely, if you know anything about CFS, you should be able to, uh, you know, get a system backed up with four words. Cool. Any questions for Daniel? And notice I didn't say feature requests that could take months to implement. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, um, I, I'm trying to organize my issues into stuff that I'll get done for my NYC bug talk uh, next Wednesday and um, and for BSD CAN. Cool. 
So, Stu and Steve, any topics, questions, things to solve in the short term or long term? Human staff cloning would be fantastic. Yeah, getting there. We got the jail part figured out. I just need the cloning part to work. <laughs> well, AI is your friend, right? You just sort of, yeah, never mind. I, I do have a question, and I apologize. I was pulled away, so it may have already been. What you got? <laughs> um, so I have a situation where I need to shift a customer to a cloud uh, environment, um, but I need to replicate back down to their local proximity uh, to a server. Uh, that sort of remains either in-house or very close by to their main office. And what I would like to do is uh, replicate, send, receive, um, probably on the order of once a minute. And I'm curious if there are tools that you would point me at. Uh, we, we currently use a backup tool that kind of does that but it's it probably doesn't prune the target very often uh, also i'm not sure that we selected that tool with a whole lot of knowledge we just sort of grabbed whatever was there is that a so, open source contraption off github or uh, i think it is i think it is i just forget the name of it cool Offhand, but... As Ian points out, ZRepple can be configured that aggressively. Um, it will sit there and uh, it, until you're up to actually that close, that what it will do is it will transfer as fast as it can. Yep. It cleans up after itself if you configure it like that on every pass. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You probably want to it. configure it to be more aggressive with snapshotting and replication than snapshot destruction because uh, snapshot destruction, while asynchronous, is actually more expensive than the other steps because That's it true. involves random I.O. Um, so if you can delay that uh, snapshot destruction and out of business hours so that you do it overnight, that's probably a big uh, game for just available IOPS and um, latency long tail distribution. Okay. The, the other thing you may want to consider, Steve, is ingress and egress charges to that cloud service. That can happen uh, really quickly. Yeah, if it egress can, can kill you. Yeah, if it gets spun, if it's something gets spun up really weird, your bank account can be empty in a, in a matter of days. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for the, the heads up on that. Especially when you have auto scaling kicking in. So not to break the lead, is your the receiving cloud provider supporting ZFS? Uh, the. The location is fairly no. Or like it's it's there are no cloud providers nearby. So I was thinking if we found something like a rack space that was even rack space or Linode or something like that, yeah. even close, that's about as good as we can do. It's nowhere near an AWS pipe. Hmm. What what volume are you looking at, Steve? Uh it's it's probably it's difficult to say. I actually won't be able to measure it until we kind of oh, roll yeah. it out. Uh, no, I get it's, it. It's like production <laughs> mode. Um, but I'm just going to guess and say the changes that are happening throughout the day are probably between 100 and 500 megs of actual block changes. Oh, okay. As long as you're, as long as you're not in the you know 100 terabyte a day type of things. Oh, yeah. It's about the other question is, grows, um, could, yeah, go ahead. another question which um, just forced itself in my mind is, 
can you uh, do a two-tier uh, uh, replication where you aggregate the changes inside the cloud vendor's network so that you get good uh, point in time recovery objective. And then from there out, do the actual offsite shipping. So that you would have this, if something happens, you have a good chance that there's a very close by cheap to replicate from uh, for rebuild purposes, um, mirror in the network. And you use that mirror as your uh, egress point. And that can also give you the advantage of if you don't, for your egress, you can egress it less often if that's an acceptable thing. Exactly. Um, and you don't have to replicate all the snapshots out. You could, let's say, repli try to replicate every minute or every five minutes, but still only um, back up uh, off-site uh, at an hourly interval if you have a significant amount of overwritten changes uh, that can save you a lot of storage and bandwidth. Hmm. And but as, you have oh. to decide what's acceptable for your you from a granularity point of view and what SLA you need for your point in time recovery and if it's worth uh, the complexity. As far as vendors that directly support ZFS and that you can use something like uh, ZREPL2, um, rsync.net right. will do that. Okay. Yeah, they okay. no longer just support rsync. They've, um, yeah, they've supported ZFS. And, uh, and I mean, ZREPL is a send and receive, so they've supported that for at least a few years now. Didn't they also put in the documentation somewhere a hint what to put in your application to get some benefits uh, for the small to medium ZFS setups so that they don't force you to have a minimum allocation to get all the relevant features? I don't know if if, if you yeah, say they do, I'll believe like you. That, which <laughs> could be a good. I messed around with it a little bit when they first started supporting it, and did some some Z REPL stuff with it, and it does work. So they used to put uh, some uh, basically permanent, um, um, yeah, special opportunity codes in the um, deep dive documentation to, uh, yeah, you normally have to be this big to get this feature, but you made it to this point in our documentation. <laughs> so here's the uh, token you can use to uh, get it anyway, for some things at least. Uh, and it used to be relevant for ZFS. I haven't checked in a year or two, so I don't know if they're still doing that. You're talking about the money category, which is above my pay grade. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, and that you normally, I think this was for shell access and so on. So you're back up. Yeah, to set up, I know to set up uh, Z REPL, we, we use mm -hmm. shell access. So I don't know if that's changed. But the other problem is that uh, if you do ZFS replication to a third party vendor, you kind of either uh, have to totally trust them or use data set encryption ahead of time. And dare I say, they have to trust you because you could send them a poison send and bad things might happen mm, because they kind of sort not of. Not really. No. If I remember correctly, um, they're working with either um, a properly virtualized system where you're. And then uh, remote block storage protocols. So, exactly. Or you need maybe a even uh, seen things which look like they may, for some things, use libzfs in user space to basically receive a snapshot and put it on block storage. Exactly. 
which uh, right. sidesteps the usual problems, or you can just spin up a trim down VM. But yes, you do. You you definitely have to encrypt it if you are not willing to trust them. That said, that same rule applies to absolutely anyone. All right. Yes, but other backup mechanisms, protocols like RASTIC, uh, ATTIC, or whatever, are designed to have uh, encryption client side as part of the taking a backup which ZFS does do because it's already in the file system. So this step, which is normally so slow uh, and annoying, um, doesn't exist in the ZFS replication because you're doing it with the full knowledge and support of the file system metadata. Yep, all true. Anything else at this time? Well, that said, I hope to go ahead. I heard it. Um, Stu, didn't you ask last week about uh, metadata um, and um, sorry about primary and secondary cache set to metadata and so on? Did you make any progress on that or was that something that else? That was, and... I thought, Greg, who is really. Oh, Greg. Okay. Wrong. Sorry, Stu. But, hey. I got you confused. <clears throat> I, I was tied up last week at NAB, so it was definitely not me. Yeah, and it was Greg, and I think in January he first brought that up. So yep. uh, yeah, it's very much a curious long run challenge. Anyhow, well, I would love to see you at BSD Can. I'd love to see you at the Open ZFS event in October, and I'm happy to call it at one thirty seven Pacific. See some of you tomorrow at the Beehive call, and I wish you a great remainder of your week. Excellent. Thanks all. Take care and like and subscribe. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.